Despite the embellishment of this video's title, the remarkable turnaround for the country of Rwanda is nothing short of exceptional. One can even say super. The tragedy of the Rwandan genocide allowed the country to completely restructure its government. President Paul Kagame is no doubt at the forefront of this revolutionary restructuring as he ushers in a new era of exceptional women in government. <laughs> What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps this channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. Rwanda is a dramatically different country following the horrific event that occurred in 1994. Previously, most women in Rwandan society held traditional roles largely regulated to their position in the homes, and today that may still be the case for many women, but the most salient difference is opportunity and Rwanda's social and political investment into its women, backed by the government itself. Earlier, a woman's role in high levels of Rwanda's government at times carried a negative undercurrent. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, strong women in Rwandan politics were demonized and portrayed as undermining the country's traditions. A civil war loomed. Extremist cartoons depicted Prime Minister Agathe Uwilingiyamana, a Hutu, as promiscuous and a threat to the nation. This is perhaps the most extreme example, but comparing modern Rwanda to that of the previous century is striking. So how did the position and potential of women change so drastically for modern Rwanda? One scholar believes the answer lies ironically in the destructive nature of the genocide itself. The result of the 1994 events had a devastating impact on all corners of Rwandan society and government. Its institutions were directly impacted or completely destroyed. Rwandans of all backgrounds began to have a heartfelt change in their worldview. I think the people themselves put it best. Women in the RPF also point out that many of today's leaders were raised by single mothers in the pre-genocide refugee camps. The hardships these young widows faced as a result of exclusion from their country stayed with their sons who were building the movement. As John Mutamba, an official at the Ministry of Gender and Family Promotion, told the researcher Elizabeth Pauli in 2003, Men who grew up in exile know the experience of discrimination. Gender is now part of our political thinking. We appreciate all components of our population across all the social divides because our country has seen what it means to exclude a group. Although difficult to say, the Rwandan genocide had a sort of salutary effect as the people were determined not to repeat the mistakes of the past Moreover, Rwandan leadership was determined to rebuild a new and better Rwanda. This new Rwanda was spearheaded by President Paul Kagame, and he believes that in order to do so, he had to involve and advance women in government. Despite the critics, after Paul Kagame's rise to power, the economy has grown by 8% annually over the last half decade, and Rwanda ranks first among 48 African countries in making progress toward achieving the UN's Millennium Development Goals. Corruption is low. Life expectancy has increased from 48 years to 58 over the last decade. And infant mortality is dropping rapidly. Paul Farmer of the Global Health Organization Partners in Health contends that he gets more done in Rwanda than anywhere else in the world. Alongside those progressive facts, Rwandan women share in the growth. Half of Rwanda's Supreme Court justices are women. Boys and girls now attend primary and secondary school in equal numbers, and new laws have been enacted that enable women to own and inherit property. Moreover, the government has initiatives to help women entrepreneurs who need help outside of or in spite of family resources. President Kagame is intent on advancing women's rights, and he has directly appointed women to key cabinet positions. 
After being given a leg up, women have taken action on all levels to rebuild Rwanda. In 2003, women won 49% of the seats in the lower house of parliament. The Women's Caucus in Parliament then devised a strategic move for the next election. Members who had occupied the seats reserved for women used their newfound prominence to contest seats open to all party members, freeing up the women-only seats so that they can be won by a successor cohort of new female politicians. As a result, female representation rose to 56% in 2008 and to 64% after the most recent elections last fall. All in all, Rwandan women are certainly changing the social and political landscape, and Paul Kagame has contributed a lot to this process. According to Dina Musandarwezo, Paul Kagame has sent a clear social message to Rwandans of both genders and of all ages that the country is headed in a new direction. Now, of course, these adjustments don't come without challenges or criticism, but it will definitely be interesting to see where Rwanda ends up. So far, the country as a whole seems to be headed in a good direction. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.